Hi there, today we're going to talk about how to coach uh, an eight and under flag football team. So, uh, currently in my second season of coaching my, sec my son's eight and under flag football team. I'm also the assistant coach in another, in another league because my son's playing in two different teams this season. Uh, slightly younger, basically first and second grade, seven, really a seven and under league. But um, basically, a couple, a couple different things to think about if you're going to be taking on this challenge. First of all, congratulations because it is an awesome thing to, uh, to coach a team and to um, inspire a group of, uh, of young people to, uh, to achieve their own goals. And, and if you ask the kids, and, and I do recommend asking them early in the season like what their own goals are, like do they want to play for a championship or do they want to just whatever uh just go out there and have a good time and and don't take it seriously and uh every time I've, I've actually asked the group this question they always say hey let's go for the championship hopefully you're in a league that actually has a championship so uh i recommend having either a parent meeting in the in the early days of the season either have a parent meeting where you're kind of going over kind of some what to expect type stuff like what your coaching style is um like if you're if you're if you're planning on playing to win or you're planning on um, having a certain amount of practices per week, I'll let let uh, the parents know up front. Uh, try to um, let them know you know coaching from the sidelines you know can be confusing for the kids, so please uh, try to refrain from that because uh, it is something that can be a problem because um, the kids start getting confused about do I do I listen to the coach? Oh. Oh, my dad's saying do something different from what the coach is saying. Who do I listen to? And it starts to have problems. And so uh, just have, like, dads, if you want to step up and be an assistant coach, that, that'd be great. Otherwise, keep it quiet from the sideline because it's confusing. Moms, too. So um, in terms of overall strategy, let's talk about plays. Uh, at the 7-8 at the and eight level, I do recommend keeping the plays somewhat simple. Um, a total of about three to five plays uh, should be enough um, with a little bit of like basically we have you know like a handoff left a handoff right a misdirect we have like a misdirection play which is a reverse and we have a pass a single pass which has lots of different options uh, the reason and we and we run we're currently running all these out of the same formation um, just because some of the kids you know, have never played football before, so they don't even know what formation is, and they start to get confused, and it's, as the game progresses and gets uh, more and more intense, you know, um, the kids start to get more and more confused, and time's on the line, you're not going to be able to really sit there and, and babysit each player, um, they just kind of got to know what to do as the game progresses, so, um, uh, so I do recommend having about three to five plays, and then if you want to uh, make adjustments, like hey uh, okay we're gonna do the same play as last time guys but uh, instead of just handing it to him I want you to fake a hand off to him or pump fake to him and then hand it off to him so little adjustments like that can be made uh, I, at this at this age um, I think they're they're perfectly capable and start them early but you know hut one hut two hut three try to get the defense to go off sides by 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 varying your hut levels uh, your whatever you want to call that and um, they're perfectly, but I, I do recommend starting that early because, uh, you know, we still have a couple kids on our team that are that are struggling to adjust because the younger leagues will just say, like, hut, and then the play will start. Um, we're also getting into silent snaps, which is allowed in our league. Silent snap, uh, you know, actually worked pretty well uh, in our last game, so we just started doing that. Uh, as far as practice, flag pulling is probably the number one thing that's going to make you lose or win games so um we have this we have this drill where people just run in a straight line without juking and people come from an angle and pull their flag um because that's basically typically how people get beat is not necessarily from a really good juke or, or footwork it's usually from just like somebody blows by them and they just fail to grab the flag and then the next thing you know it's a touchdown um passes are a thing at this age you know deep bombs are are rarely connected, but they do happen. I'm, and when I say deep bomb, I'm talking like 30 yards max. Uh, 50, 10 and 15 yards are, are um, somewhat consistent, and then you, you should be able to get like a, a five yard pass fairly consistently. So don't be afraid to pass. 
Um, passing definitely works, but um, but you know you do risk interceptions and, and turnovers and stuff like that. Uh, in terms of defense, uh, we're we're currently playing in a six-person league. Um, the four-two works pretty good in a six-person league. If it was a um, if it was a seven-person league, I'd probably run like a four-three. Uh, the, you know, the three people being the safeties, the four people being on the, you know, a couple yards behind the line of scrimmage. Um, like a zone coverage. Um, but the zone starts to fall apart when they start passing kind of deep and medium deep. Oh my, hold on, we got like a traffic jam. Yeah, so the zone starts to fall apart when they start deep passing. So um, I recommend at least explaining what man coverage is to them. So if you do need to make an adjustment to to man coverage, you can do that fairly easily uh, because, you know, with the zone, the safeties will kind of just let the uh, let the, the deep wide receivers just go past them. So um, what else? Um, you know, at this age, you know, we've got some kids on our team who get a little upset when they when they make a mistake or when things aren't going their way. We've had kids crying in the, on the field in the middle of the game. We get kids getting upset from time to time. So uh, do your best to try to get them to focus on what's important at that point in time, whether it's um, you know, just the next play, really. All right, forget about what happened in the past. Now we need to focus on what's important now. W, that's what we say, W-I-N, what's important now. I got that from some, some book, but um, what else? Uh, let's see. Uh, practices, uh, currently we're doing two practices a week. Uh, not this week, because we're doing one practice, because we had three games instead of two. So we're just going to do the one practice this week, but... We're going to do two practices a week until we get to the uh, mid-season mark, and then we're going to kind of reevaluate, see if see if it still makes sense. And I've noticed that once you kind of get to the – because I, I coach multiple sports. Once you kind of get to the mid-season mark, um, you know, practice, turnout starts to dwindle a little bit. Um, so um, the, the, we might switch to one per week. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But uh, I, I do recommend two a week – Two, two like one hour ish practices per week in the uh, especially in the first few weeks um, because you know you should get pretty good turnout and really uh, if the other if the other teams are practicing that much you're gonna fall behind if you don't do it so um, if you do want to take your season seriously and try to get those kids a championship um, you know gotta show them that hard work pays off um, I think that's pretty much everything um, you know, get out there and uh, hopefully win your kids a championship and it's a good bonding experience with your own child. Uh, oh, as far as coaching your own kid, I recommend, um, and pretty much every coach and assistant coach tells me the same thing, my kid doesn't listen to me. So I recommend having the other coaches kind of keep a handle on your kid and you kind of ha keep a handle on their kids. That way no, no coach is handling their own kid because uh, basically their kid won't listen to them because that's just how kids are. So have the other coaches handle your kid and you handle their kids and everybody will be fine. Definitely get some assistant coaches though. All right, that's going to be it. Uh, let me know what you thought about this video and enjoy the rest of your day.